Tyrannosauroids. Welcome back. What the heck was that? Welcome, guys, once again to the channel Rank of Dinosaurs, where we rank, you guessed it, dinosaurs. And today we're going to be looking at a certain group that we've kind of looked at before, but, you know, m much more of its uh, derived members. Today we're going a little bit more, you know, ancient, a little bit more primitive, a little bit more primeval, if you, if I say so myself. But yes, so we're looking at Tyrannosauroids. Maybe I'm gonna see sneaking a couple of, you know, later Tyrannosaurs for good measure, since in my Tyrannosaur video I did talk about you, Tyrannus, which you know I should have saved it for this video, but you know, I am stubborn like that but yes so today we'll hopefully hopefully i'm going to be sticking mostly to tyrannosauroids so without further ado we're going to be starting with d long so we're going to be starting the video with d long the emperor dragon which, you know it's a pretty sick name if you ask me so basil small very small <laughs> starting with very small basil tyrannosaur Tyrannosauroid from the Lower Cretaceous. This is in the Yixian Formation in China. And it is a very important find since it is the first evidence of feathers in Tyrannosaurs. Something that was, you know, speculated before. Sorry about that. Uh, speculated before, but, you know, confirmed by the findings of D. Long, which had, you know, simple feathers, which, you know, are still feathers. I hate it when, you know, people like, try to, you know, separate, you know, feathers and, or proto feathers or something like, bro, they're feathers. They can be, you know, very complex feathers, but they're still feathers. And these were, these were found in skin impressions near the jaw and the tail of the animal. And they're, com the actual remains are actually pretty complete, including a skull and a semi-articulated skeleton, which, you know, shows us a rather agile animal so you know it's pretty fast pretty nimble and that it would had a pretty good balance you know pretty long tail and one of the interesting things is that it had a very uh very bad sense of smell not terrible but definitely very inferior to you know later tyrannosaurs which rely a lot on their well not rely a lot but rely on their sense of smell of smell to either you know sense danger or or detect prey but so which means that the long wasn't you know so much it didn't rely on this so much but it's other senses like probably you know their vision and their you know rather fast uh, build so d long i don't hate it um, but there are definitely cooler things that will come um after d long so i'm gonna put it in c tier yes c tier for d long Guan Long. So we're going to be moving on. Uh, this time going a little bit uh, back in time to late Jurassic. So this is a Proceratosaurid Tyrannosauroid. Yes, Proceratosaurid. We're going to be looking at that a little bit later in the video. But this is uh, from, again, China. So, you know, China, a little bit of a, you know, um, a kind of like the, the cradle of a Tyrannosaur evolution, you know, where all Tyrannosaur, Tyrannosaur it started. But um, the crown dragon, Guanlong, actually has a couple specimens to its name. Um, there's a, an adult and a juvenile one, respectively. And they, the mature one, which is, you know, the bigger one reached 11 and a half feet. So, you know, it's a medium-sized theropod, like small to medium-sized, and reaching a... 275 pounds in body mass so you know nothing to scoff at um it shared a lot of traits with you know its descendants you know, later tyrannosaurs but it has to had very unusual ones the first one being the most you know characteristic thing about guanlong being the crest on top of its head this was a very much more delicate crest and much more you know intricate looking so what this means is that probably wasn't used like uh Dilophosaurus, which is probably more used to, you know, uh, species recognition. But uh, this one, I believe it was much more for, you know, um, like 
sexual display most uh, probably most uh, mostly used for that and i gotta say unlike um later time around source this guy had three long fingers very long fingers and some pretty large hands too <laughs> uh, for a a tyrannosaur but we gotta remember these guys are much more basal so they had a, a less specialized uh, body plan and uh, to say the least so aside from the crest it actually resembled the previous tyrannosaur right d long and with with you know the coated the, with the coat of feathers and all so one long i've got to say i love one long is one of those basal tyrannosaurs that you heard of or that you learn about uh, first and uh, right there with d long but you know it's miles better than d long this this guy's going straight into a tier Proceratosaurus. So we're gonna go even further back in time to the mid Jurassic, where this genus of theropodinosaur lived in what is now England. And this guy, thought to be first a species of megalosaur, you know, as all um, uh, theropod dinosaurs that were found back in the day, you know, they were lumped into megalosaurs into uh, megalosauria but you know proceratosaurus not a megalosaur it was named proceratosaurus actually um because it they thought the part of its uh, crest which was you know it is uh, broken so we don't know the full extent of it uh, they they thought it resembled a ceratosaurus uh, the ceratosaurus nose horn uh, which you know don't even compare proceratosaurus with the actual ceratosaurus that guy's a chad Preservatosaurus is cool, but you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, this is a small to medium-sized predator, so you know, still a carnivore. And it is estimated to be at 10 feet, 10 feet in length. And yes, this so this crest did resemble Guanlong, but you know, it does it didn't have anything to do with um, other uh, groups of dinosaurs. This is the oldest known Tyrannosauroid that we know on the fossil record. And the fact that it lived in England during the mid-Jurassic means that, yes, it did have to coexist with the likes of the actual Megalosaurus and the sauropod Cetiosaurus, for example. Um, so, uh, most most of Sarad, uh, Proceratosaurus, we actually have to infer it from its close relative, like Guanlong. So, we don't have a ton. Um, so, Proceratosaurus, I have to say... I do not obviously don't like it as much as Guanlong, but I definitely like it more than D Long. So I think it, it'll land straight into B tier. Apalachiosaurus. Now I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you say Apalachio or Apalachiosaurus. No, I think Apalachiosaurus. Actually sounds uh, actually sounds about right. So I think I just answered my own question there. But this guy's a Tyrannosaurian, so yes. Technically it is I mean it is a Tyrannosauroid, but you know, much more uh, derived. This is a, you know, theropod from the late Cretaceous of Eastern North America. Yes, not from actual Laramidia, where most Tyrannosaurs are found, but in Appalachia, which is the island continent that was, you know, on the other side of the Western Interior Sea, Seaway, sorry. And there's only one skeleton, actually, that we know from Appalachiosaurus, and it belongs to a juvenile. So we don't even have like full adults of Appalachiosaurus. And uh, this actually represents a 21 foot, uh, uh, feet long animal, which, you know, pretty big, weighing 1,400 pounds, pretty large. But honestly, this indicates that, you know, actual adults were significantly larger um, in size. So the remains are not great, uh, but for certain things that we know, is that did have a row of uh, six crest like lines on top of its snout, uh, similar to another much more derived tyrannosaur uh, from Asia, um, Alliuramus, which you know I've talked about in my the other tyrannosaur video. And that is this guy is significantly different, and than its other Eastern North American tyrannosaur uh, tyrannosaur um, cousins like another guy we're going to be talking about later so 
have to say, heard some buzz around Appalachiosaurus, how it's a cool Tyrannosaur and all, but honestly, I thought it had better remains to start with, so I'm a little disappointed when I did my research for Appalachiosaurus. I think it's other, uh, I think it's a Appalachian cousin, it's much cooler. So, Appalachiosaurus, I mean, you're not as bad as D-Long. I'm gonna, uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to put you lower than Dinlong, actually. Dinlong has feathers, so it's kind of nice. That Susky Tyrannus. Now, this is a late Cretaceous. Um, Southern Laramidian. So, again, this is from the part that was mostly known for his Tyrannosaurus. Um, found in the Moreno Hill Formation in Western Mexico. This is the Coyote Tyrant. So, Susky Tyrannus was actually, well, it went through a lot of different uh, revisions because at first it was thought to be a small dromaeosaurid, which, you know, oh, I'm sorry about that again, that a it was thought to be a small dromaeosaurid. After that, it was, uh, you know, briefly called Zuni Tyrannus, um, which, you know, made, made it, uh, was made popular by the show Planet Dinosaur, which did call it Zuni Tyrannus. Uh, pretty strange, but you know, we'll see it later why. And but this is all prior to its scientific description, finally, which concluded it to be a small tyrannosauroid uh, measuring 12 feet long. And it is absolutely very important because it did fill a lot of you know morphological and temporal gaps, phylog phylogenetically speaking, if you if you say so myself. Um, in Tyrannosauroid evolution, so it did it it did major like like major shakeups to you know the whole tree of the Tyrannosauroids. Um, this guy uh, again, it was found in the Moreno Hill Formation, uh, and it did share its environment with the likes of Zuni Ceratops, which you know Zuni Ceratops I did talk about it in my other videos, um, but. Uh, I think that's where the name actually Zuni Tyrannus comes from. Um, other incredible animals that it, might, it definitely interacted with was Nothronychus and Jewayati, which is a hadrosaurid. So, you know, Suski Tyrannus, it is kind of, I kind of like it, but I can't put it much higher than B tier. Yeah, I think I like it more than Pusaratosaurus. Electrosaurus. So. This is an Asian Tyrannosauroid from the late Cretaceous in the Iron Dabasu Formation in actual, I think it's China, yes, not, not Mongolia. I think it's not Mongolia. I might be wrong about that. Let me know in the comments. I, I'm pretty sure I read China. Um, but yeah, so Electrosaurus, which for the longest time as a kid, I thought it was a, like a, like Alluramus' um, closest relative, which I guess I'm wrong. I'm just wrong about that. I'm a foolish child. But no, yes, it, it couldn't be uh, like farther from the truth because Electrosaurus isn't even as, you know, specialized as uh, Aldioramus. But one thing it was specialized in, it was going very fast. This was a medium sized, moderately built Tyrannosaur, which again, indicated by its very long hind limbs, it was a very fast animal. Like, it was running 90% of the time. And, you know, likely filled the niche of the pursuit predator of its environment. This guy probably hunted the likes of um, um, Arche Archaeornithomimus canignathasia, which is a, you know, a raptorosaur. A Bactrosaurus, Gilmerosaurus, those are both um, hadrosaurs. And probably fleeing from the likes of, you know, uh, Therisinosaurus, like, you know, Nemangosaurus or the big ass Oviraptor, the biggest of them all, Gigantoraptor. So, Electrosaurus, I haven't thought about this dinosaur in a long time, but it did hit a soft spot because as a kid, I was very, I don't know if, if this happened to you, but I was very fascinated by very slender looking tyrannosaurs i don't know why you know it just challenged the view that we had of you know just tyrannosaurs in general and 
it was for me it was Electrosaurus and Aliuranus, which we know were like the outliers. Uh, now we know that there are even more outrageous uh, Tyrannosaurids, but you know, Electrosaurus. I'm gonna put it in eight tier. I know it's controversial to say this, but Electrosaurus is an eight tier for me. Dryptosaurus. Now this is a genus of EU Tyrannosaurian. So yes, again, uh, yeah, this is the outlier I was talking about, and I'm sorry about that. I do break. I do be breaking the rules that way. But this guy was from the island continent of Appalachia during the late Maastrichtian. Yes, this guy lived all the way to the end of the to the demise of dinosaurs. This is a large carnivorous theropod. Again, pretty amazing that it lived on this side of the, you know, what is now North America. Or, well, the United States. And, you know, had relatively long arms for its size. This guy had pretty long arms and pretty large hands, too. This is a 25-foot uh, long animal that weighed up to... 3,300 pounds, so we're talking big numbers here. I think it's the biggest uh, Tyrannosaur that we've talked about today, actually. Still, it only had two fingers. Uh, again, a, a correct uh, characteristic and known for, you know, later, or not, not necessarily later, but, you know, already in, you know, early Cretaceous, uh, almost all Tyrannosaurs, did have those two fingers, and but not all of them actually, because Eutymanus is one of those that did have three fingers. And what this means basically is that probably Dryptosaurus, unlike Tyrannosaurus, it did use its arms and hands in conjunction with its powerful jaws. You know, it did have a pretty strong bite force to either you know help it um, grab prey. Or dispatch it all uh, altogether. So Dryptosaurus is pretty rad, pretty metal Tyrannosaur. I don't care what anybody says. And uh, Dryptosaurus also has to its name one of the coolest paintings, a watercolor painting by the late Charles R. Knight, depicting two fighting dinosaurs, which yes, they are Dryptosaurus. So Dryptosaurus, I mean, it's going to be the undisputed S tier of this list. And that is going to be the tier list. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments. What do you think of the tier list? How do you agree? How do you disagree? How would you say I am freaking wrong? And how you hate this tier list actually. But no. Let me know how you would, ma you would make yours. What's your favorite Tyrannosauroid? Why did I make a mistake and include Tyrannosaurians? When you know this is a Tyrannosauroid video. Just as I did in the first video. <laughs> in my first Tyrannosaur video. But you know. That's fine. Uh, we'll leave for this. Uh, I love reading the comments, even if it's, you know, bashing my uh, strange decisions in tier list making. But please, like the video. Helps a lot. Subscribe. It helps even more. We are finally at 500 subscribers. We've done it. Thank you again. I couldn't be more um, grateful to you guys. I don't know how to say thank you enough. I didn't think I would make it this far. So what I can say is just we're going to keep going. Gonna be pumping up those tier lists. Dinosaur. Uh, let me let me know in the comments, please. Uh, what are tier lists would you like to see? Obviously, prehistoric themed. It doesn't have to just be dinosaurs, you know. It has, can be Cenozoic mammals. It can be Paleozoic weirdos. It can be dinosaur dinos documentaries. Um, and let me know what are there even other type of content you want me to make. So, just want to say, really grateful. Uh, the next milestone is probably going to be a thousand subscribers, which is going to be even crazier. So once again, I'll see you guys in the next video.